Today, not only are we talking backpacking sleep systems and how they change based on season, but also this is a collaboration with four other awesome YouTube channels. Yes, we're talking backpacking sleep systems. Again, in the past few videos, I have talked a lot about sleeping bags and sleeping pads separately. Today, we're gonna combine the two and talk about how sleeping systems change depending on the season, go through different options and various things to consider when you're trying to choose what makes the most sense for the type of backpacker that I am. Second to this is this is a collaboration with four other awesome YouTube channels the Wasatch Gear Review, Dan Becker, Amy Rout, and the Backpack Blazer, Dustin. All of these channels are also doing some kind of a winter type of video in reference to how things change based off of going from summer backpacking to winter backpacking. So definitely check out the other channels that are uh, contributing to this collaboration. Links for their videos down in the description. So let's talk about what my winter backpacking sleeping system looks like and how it's going to change as season changes. I'll show you all the different options. But what I've got here is kind of the ideal four season winter setup for myself when I just know that temperatures are gonna be pretty nasty and cold. So we'll move this top bag uh, off for a second and just talk about kind of the core basis of what really makes up a four season winter setup a really good low degree, zero degree in this case. This is the Perea Outdoor Products Thermo Down Zero Degree Down Sleeping Bag. This is a great way to start in a four season winter setup because zero degree is going to guarantee plenty of warmth for those really cold nights. But to uh, pair that properly, you need something that is going to be able to be underneath you to keep you nice and warm, protected from the cold ground, namely when you're sleeping on snow. So a quality good four season pad like this Nemo Tensor Alpine, which has three layers of suspended metalized film on the inside of it. This is gonna be a great option for a four season use because it's gonna reflect that heat from your body back up into you and it's gonna push that uh, cold air back down to the ground and really be a good barrier. So if you are not using this kind of system or if you have more of a three season or a summer type of sleeping pad, a great way to supplement this is to put a, a closed cell foam pad underneath to add R value. So that's one of the great things about sleeping pads is your temperature rating can go into lower degrees by stacking pads. So if you didn't know that, now you do. In terms of a sleeping bag that is not jumping into that full zero degree range, I've got a 15 degree sleeping bag. And this is a good option because this allows me to not overheat myself because if I'm not gonna be jumping down into temperatures that are that low, then I don't necessarily need to carry a bag that has got that much fill and it's just carrying unnecessary extra weight and bulk. So this 15 degree bag, this is the Nemo Caillou down sleeping bag. This is a great option for a little bit warmer winter four season use, but this is my ideal four season winter setup. Things change from this point forward. So now let's talk about a three season setup. For three season, things get a little bit different and it's gonna be pretty dependent on where you fall month wise into that shoulder season. So this is your early to late spring to early to late fall. And so temperatures, depending on where you're gonna be, could be in the teens. <laughs> and so maybe going with the four season setup is the way to go. But for the most part, you're going to really be in that low 30s, mid 30s uh, to low 40s uh, as a three season type of setup. So I've got two different options here of what I typically carry. And that is going to be some kind of like 15 degree bag uh, for those later in the uh, fall type of things or early, early spring, where you could still have potentially snow and that kind of thing happening in your area, 
At least that's how it is here in Utah. So I will still consider carrying a 15 degree bag. However, it's probably a little bit overkill and it's not something that I will always carry, but it's nice to have this as an option. And you'll notice that there's the crossover between, this isn't just a single three season setup and these are the only options that I use. And for my summer setup, these are the only options I use. Things transition and mix between how everything kind of melds together. So 15 degree bag, definitely an option for three season use. But for the most part, my 20 degree Sierra Designs Cloud 800 is gonna be the three season bag of choice for myself because this is going to guarantee that I'll be warm down to the high 20s. But I have the ability with this bag in particular to regulate my temperature because I've got a cool foot vent. I've got the quilt style type of top here, which brings into the conversation the ability to use quilts in a three season setting. I personally am not a fan of using quilts in a four season setting, but with a like 20 degree, even a 15 degree quilt and a good sleeping pad, you're definitely gonna be warm and prepared for three season type of use. It allows you to regulate temperature better. That's the key thing uh, in this discussion. So 20 degree bag and then a really good sleeping pad that is going to provide a sufficient amount of R value to stay warm, but not overheat and reflect so much body heat back to you that you overheat and then you're uncomfortable sleeping. Nobody likes to be sweaty and like clammy and gross in their sleeping bag. I like to be just perfect. So the pad of choice for myself right now is the Xped Sinmat HL Winter MW for medium wide. This has an R value of five. So very similar to like the uh, Climate Lux insulated or the Static V insulated and uh, the Thermarest NeoWare X-Therm, those kinds of situations, basically an R value of about five is gonna be perfect for three season use because you're guaranteeing yourself to have enough insulation and barrier uh, from having that conduction of cold coming through the ground. Or if you're in a hammock, that's a whole other discussion. But for me, ground dweller, this is the pad of choice. Really, really nice. So 20 degree bag on top of a R value five sleeping pad is kind of the ideal if I am on, let's say like a NeoWare x Lite that has an R value of three, 3.2, something like that, then I might opt for a lower degree sleeping bag to help compensate for that uh, potential of being a little bit colder by the pad not being able to provide the insulation that I need. Now let's talk summer sleep systems and how things change for me depending on it being summer and where I'm going to be at. Now for the most part, when I'm in the dead of summer, I avoid hiking, backpacking in the desert as much as possible because it's just too hot, it's uncomfortable, and I don't enjoy it. But if I do find myself in a summer situation in the desert where temperatures really at night don't drop below like 60, then I will carry just like a Costco quilt, something in the 50 degree range. That's really just to, to be there to, to be a comfort more than anything. I mean, you're gonna sleep warm no matter what, and I'll take a sleeping pad that has a really minimal R value. And that's my type of summer, really hot kind of setup. However, here in Utah, we have a really great mountain range with hundreds of miles of trail to hike on the high Uinta wilderness. And so with it being at a high altitude, things up there in the 10,000, 11,000 foot range in the dead of summer, you could still have snow happen, which is not unheard of and I've had it happen. So with, with knowing that, I will make decisions based off of weather and that kind of thing so that I'm carrying the right gear. So you'll notice that I've got a three season type of system here for that kind of application because I have needed a 20 degree bag for that kind of application. So at higher elevation, I may carry more of a three season type of uh, system, but for the most part, majority of the time, my summer system is gonna look something like this, a 30 degree 
Really simple down sleeping bag. This is a down Montbell spiral down hugger that I've had for a lot of years. I think like seven or eight years at this point. One of my all time favorite sleeping bags. This thing is just fantastic. But it's a great way for me to enjoy uh, backpacking in the summer. It's lightweight, it compacts really small, and that's one of the benefits of backpacking uh, in the summer. Now, in terms of the type of sleeping pad that I, ch that I choose, uh, for example, the pad that I have really enjoyed for summer use so far is this Big Agnes Axle Air Insulated. This will give me a temperature range down to 32 degrees. And so in those higher elevations where temperatures down into the high 30s, low 40s is not unheard of, this is a great option for me. It's just how it is for my area. Things are gonna be a little bit different for you, but this is the type of scenario that I really enjoy. 30 degree bag is perfect for summer use for me. I've even tried a 40 degree quilt and that was just a little bit too cold. So I'm gonna stick with the 30 degree for summer use. So guys, that is my sleep system and how it changes depending on season, winter to, sh to three season, shoulder season type of stuff to summer, lots of options. I understand that not everybody that's watching this video is gonna have this many options of sleeping bags and pads to choose from. So there's ways for you to adjust and make it work for you depending on the gear that you have. If you need to use clothing to layer up and uh, add additional warmth to a sleeping bag or get a sleeping bag liner or add a closed cell foam underneath, put a Nalgene or hand warmers uh, in your sleeping bag, so a Nalgene filled with boiling water. Lots of different options uh, to adjust your single system to make it more uh, versatile and fluctuate depending on the season. So there you go guys. Again, this is a collaboration with a bunch of other YouTube channels. Links down in the description for their videos. Check them out. Thank you for watching as always. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please do. As always guys, have an awesome day. We'll catch you on the next video.